Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, in this session, we are actually continuing with the functional areas of the cerebral hemisphere. Uh, in the last few sessions, we have seen about the numerous salsa and gyre of the cerebral hemisphere. We have also discussed about the suprolateral surface. In this session, we will be dealing with the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere. Without knowing how these salsa and gyre are arranged, we are not able to uh, study the exact details of the functional areas. Okay, so that is the reason why I am going with the salsa and gyre first. Uh, many of you have uh, requested me to do uh, the functional areas. Actually, I am doing it uh, whenever I get time. So, after this session, uh, the next session will be uh, the functional areas and I am planning to do it lobe wise, the frontal lobe, the functional areas, the frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, temporal lobe like that. So, keep watching. Uh, so, after this medial surface, we will move on to the functional areas proper. Uh, and again, functional areas is a very important topic as far as theory as well as practical aspect is concerned. Uh, so, let us see what are the features which you can expect in the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere. We know that there are two cerebral hemispheres and we are cutting one single structure in order to separate two cerebral hemispheres. So, that single structure is known as corpus callosum. I have done a session on corpus callosum, you can go and watch it. Uh, so, when we uh, take the two cerebral hemispheres and if we look at the medial surface, the first and foremost structure which will come into our view will be the corpus callosum. So, this is the corpus callosum. This is the anterior end and this is the posterior end. Uh, so, this is the genu of the corpus callosum. You have the trunk of the corpus callosum and the posterior broadened area is the splenium of corpus callosum. So, on the medial surface of cerebral hemisphere, the first uh, thing which we will notice is the corpus callosum. Now, uh, the remaining sulci and gyri on the medial surface are arranged in front, superior and posterior to this single structure, the corpus callosum. Okay. The inferior aspect, this is actually belonging to the inferior surface of the cerebral hemisphere. So, in this session, we are not going to mention any features of the inferior surface, we are just focusing on the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere. So, uh, let us see which are the main sulci you are going to see on the medial surface of cerebral hemisphere. Uh, first, I will mention the main sulci, then I will describe in detail about the sulci and the important gyri seen in relation with the sulci. Okay. So, let us start. From the anterior aspect, you have the para olfactory sulci. You have the anterior, this is the anterior and this is the posterior para olfactory sulci. After that, you can see the callosal sulcus. Since this is the corpus callosum, just closer to the corpus callosum above, there is a depression that is known as callosal sulcus. And again, parallel to the callosal sulcus, uh, say roughly 1 centimeter above it, uh, going in line with the corpus callosum, you can see another sulcus that is known as cingulate sulcus. And coming to the posterior aspect, you can see one sulcus that is known as the supraspleneal sulcus. Why? Because this is the splenium of corpus callosum. So, the sulcus lying just above the splenium of corpus callosum, you call it as supra. Supra means above. Supraspleneal sulcus. And coming to the posterior aspect, we have two important sulci. They are the parieto occipital sulcus. This is the parieto occipital sulcus. And the last one here, which we should mention, is that is the calcarine sulcus. So, when we discussed about uh, the sulci and gyre on the suprolateral aspect of the cerebral hemisphere, we have seen this parieto occipital sulcus. We have seen the calcarine sulcus, which are actually projecting onto the suprolateral surface. Though the major portion of the calcarine and the parieto occipital sulcus are viewed from the medial surface, a portion of it will be extending onto the suprolateral surface as well. So, uh, we will be seeing one by one how these sulci are actually demarcating the different gyre on the medial surface. So, let us start again with the first anterior and posterior para olfactory sulci. Uh, this is actually seen just in front of lamina terminalis. This is the lamina terminalis. Okay. So, just in front of the lamina terminalis, you can see the anterior as well as posterior pa para olfactory sulci. And this will divide this region into two gyri. The one which is seen closer to the uh, lamina terminalis, uh, 
that is known as paraterminal gyrus. Okay, that is known as paraterminal gyrus and in front of it, that is between the anterior and posterior para olfactory sulci, you get the para olfactory gyrus. Okay, so these are the two gyri seen in relation with the para olfactory sulci, the para terminal gyrus and para olfactory gyrus. Now, uh, we have already mentioned about the callosal sulcus seen just above the corpus callosum and uh, another sulcus which is seen 1 cm, roughly if you, if you calculate the distance, this will be roughly 1 cm away from the callosal sulcus but somewhat parallel to it. That is known as the cingulate sulcus. And the cingulate sulcus when we trace, the posterior end is actually getting upturned just behind the central sulcus. Okay, it is getting upturned behind the central sulcus. So, what is central sulcus? That is a major sulcus which we have seen on the superolateral surface and a portion of it is actually dipping. This is the portion which is dipping onto the medial surface. So, this cingulate sulcus which is actually pa running parallelly uh, will be uh, upturning just behind the central sulcus. So, the gyrus which is seen between these two sulci, which are the uh, two sulci, one is the callosal sulcus and the other one is the cingulate sulcus. So, between the callosal sulcus and the cingulate sulcus, you get a gyrus that is known as cingulate gyrus. Okay. Uh, now, the remaining region. So, we have seen the uh, paraterminal, para olfactory gyri, then you have seen the cingulate gyrus. Then the remaining region or the medial aspect is divided into two portions by another branch from the uh, cingulate sulcus. This is the cingulate sulcus, right. So, there is one more limb arising from the cingulate sulcus somewhat in from at the position middle of the corpus callosum. If you just take the corpus callosum as a whole, somewhere from the middle position, uh, corresponding to the middle position, you can see another sulcus uh, running upwards from the cingulate sulcus. From the cingulate sulcus, one sulcus is running upwards and that will divide the remaining anterior portion of the medial surface into two regions. Which are the two regions? One region, a smaller portion lying behind this uh, sulcus and a larger portion which is lying in front of the sulcus. So, this is how the anterior portion is further divided. So, the one which is lying posterior to this actually belongs to the paracentral lobule. We will come to the details of the paracentral lobule and the region which is lying anteriorly, anteriorly it is a bigger region. The anterior portion uh, anteriorly, anterior to the sulcus is a bigger portion and that is what is known as medial frontal gyrus. Okay, so till now we have seen uh, the para terminal gyrus, para olfactory gyrus, you have seen the cingulate gyrus, posteriorly the region belonging to the paracentral lobule and anteriorly the larger region which is belonging to the medial frontal gyrus. Now, what do you mean by paracentral lobule? Paracentral lobule is a favorite short note for uh, UGs, especially uh, the function of the paracentral lobule. So, before uh, we move on to the function, we should know the boundaries of the paracentral lobule. So, we have already mentioned about the central sulcus here, which is actually extending from the superolateral surface to the medial surface. Uh, a region bounded anteriorly and posteriorly uh, or we can say the region bounded uh, around the central sulcus. Uh, so, we can let us try to make out the boundaries. Superiorly, it is the supromedial border. This is this uh, entire thing is the supromedial border. Okay, so superiorly, it is the supromedial border. Inferiorly, you get the cingulate sulcus. Posteriorly, it is the upturned end of the cingulate sulcus, and anteriorly, it is the a limb of the cingulate sulcus which is running upwards. So, anteriorly, posteriorly and inferiorly you have segments of the cingulate sulcus and superiorly you have the supromedial margin of the uh, cerebral hemisphere, supromedial margin of the cerebral hemisphere. Now, uh, in it you have the 
medial portion of the central sulcus as well. So, in front of the central sulcus, it is actually the precentral gyrus and behind the central sulcus, it is actually the postcentral gyrus. Precentral gyrus and postcentral gyrus. So, uh, I again uh, uh, request you uh, to see the superolateral surface gyri and sulci in order to understand this segment in a better way. Okay. So, this is how you get the paracentral lobule. Okay. And now, what, do you, what is the importance of this paracentral lobule? This is the region where uh, the portion of the human body like the leg portion and the perineum is represented in the motor as well as sensory cortex. The precentral gyrus actually belongs to the motor region and the postcentral gyrus actually belongs to the sensory aspect, isn't it? So, this is the region where the leg, the foot as well as the perineum uh, are uh, seated in the cerebral cortex. So, what could be the functions of the uh, of the paracentral lobule? It is the um, it is actually well developed in human beings, and it is said to be the highest cortical uh, controlling station for defecation and micturition. Okay, defecation and micturition control centers are located in the paracentral lobule. And then when we consider the blood supply of this region, it is by the anterior cerebral artery. If there is a, any occlusion in the anterior cerebral artery. Uh, the patient will be presenting with lower limb weakness along with urinary incontinence. Okay, uh, lower limb weakness along with urinary incontinence. These will be the uh, striking features with which a patient suffering from a lesion in the paracentral lobule will be presenting. So, paracentral lobule supplied by the anterior cerebral artery. Uh, it is mainly concerned with the centers of micturition and defecation. So, uh, you can uh, draw a beautiful diagram like this and you can mention about its function, the blood supply and the applied aspect uh, when it is asked as a short note. So, that is about the anterior aspect. Now, coming to the posterior aspect, this, is, this region is actually the splenium of corpus callosum. Just above that and again parallelly, you will get one sulcus that is known as supraspleneal sulcus. So, this sulcus will actually divide the posterior aspect into two gyri. Uh, the one which is we have already mentioned that is the cingulate gyrus and above that you call it as precuneus. So, why is it called precuneus? We will be seeing it uh, uh, for the after this. So, this is the cingulate gyrus and this is the precuneus. These two are separated by the supraspleneal sulcus which is just lying above the splenium of corpus callosum. Now, after that, let's see how we are going to mark the calcarine sulcus. So, calcarine sulcus again, we are starting uh, at a point just below the splenium of corpus callosum. We will start with a convexity facing upwards up to the occipital lobe. This is the occipital lobe, right? So, we mark a point just below the splenium of corpus callosum and we are going to connect that point to the occipital lobe with a convexity facing upwards and that is a deeper sulcus and that is actually uh, what is known as calcarine sulcus and a portion of it will be actually seen on the superolateral aspect as well in the occipital lobe. Now, uh, we are going to mark another sulcus uh, somewhere from the middle of it, from the middle of the calcarine sulcus upwards so as to reach the supramedial border and the distance between these two points will be roughly 5 centimeters. Okay, uh, so we mark a point roughly at the middle of the calcarine sulcus and we are going to trace it upwards onto the supramedial margin and that point will be actually lying 5 centimeter in front of this point. Okay, and that is what is known as parieto occipital sulcus. And again, the parieto occipital sulcus, just like the calcarine sulcus, will be extending onto the superolateral aspect. Now, we can see that there is a triangular region enclosed by the parieto occipital sulcus and the calcarine sulcus. And this triangular region is known as cuneus. Okay, cuneus. And that is the reason why the region which was lying in front of it was known as precuneus. Precuneus, we have already mentioned, uh, that is the, the gyrus which is uh, seen just behind the cingulate gyrus separated by the supraspleneal sulcus. 
Okay, so since this region is known as cuneus, the region lying in front of it is known as precuneus. Now, one more important factor which I would like to mention here is, there is a small region between the splenium of corpus callosum and the calcarine sulcus and that is known as isthmus. Okay, that region is known as isthmus. So, uh, with this knowledge, uh, it will be easy for you uh, when we discuss the functional areas of the uh, medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere. So, once again, uh, we will see the important sulci, para olfactory, anterior and posterior para olfactory sulci, callosal sulcus, cingulate sulcus, the two upturned limbs of the cingulate sulcus, supra-splenial supra -splenial sulcus, calcarine sulcus and the parieto-occipital sulcus. And the different gyri are paraterminal gyrus, para olfactory gyrus, the medial, the larger one, the medial frontal gyrus, behind that a region which is belonging to the paracentral lobule, the cingulate gyrus, the precuneus region and the cuneus region. And uh, there is a small region between the splenium and the calcarine sulcus that is the isthmus of the uh, medial surface. And uh, we have also seen that a portion of the calcarine sulcus as well as the parieto occipital sulcus will be extending onto the suprolateral surface. Likewise, there is a sulcus which is extending from the suprolateral surface to the medial surface that is the central sulcus. Okay, uh, so thanks for watching. I uh, will be doing uh, further sessions soon uh, on the functional areas of the cerebral hemisphere. Those who haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe so that I will feel motivated to do more and more videos. I am also happy to announce that I am starting a telegram account uh, so that um, on a daily basis I would like to discuss some of the questions which will be asked for NEET PG as well as UG. Uh, so those who are interested are free to join uh, my telegram account. I will be sharing the link with you soon. Uh, okay, thank you so much.